Good morning and good evening to all the folks uh, who are actually watching this uh, episode where we're going to be talking about holiday fraud and chargebacks. As we all know, one of the biggest nightmares that any merchant has is about chargebacks and fraud, especially during holiday season. But with the right preparation, with the right information that you have, you can definitely combat chargebacks and fraud, and they are easy to manage if you know what to expect and how to manage it. So today we are going to be talking about what kind of trends we have experienced in 2021 and uh, what are the uh, pain points that merchants faced last year, especially during holiday season, what are the most vulnerable days during the year, and uh, what can you do to proactively prevent chargebacks and fraud. Well, my name is Suresh Dakshina, and I'm the president and co-founder of Chargeback Groups. I have over 19 years of experience in the payments industry. I've been on the issuer side, I've been on the acquiring side, I've also worked with uh, merchants. So, um, you know, I have learned over the period of years how chargebacks and fraud have evolved. I've worked closely with card networks and Fortune 500 merchants to understand the fraud and the chargeback landscape, and hopefully I'll be able to present you some data that can definitely help you protect your business. With that said, I wanted to first turn your attention into a report that was provided by TransUnion last year. And they have mentioned that actually 25% increase in e-commerce fraud was reported in 2021. This is alarming because we have seen similar numbers in 2020 and we had experienced, we experienced the same numbers last year as well, which is phenomenal. Not, not several merchants can withstand that kind of pressure. When you experience 25% more e-commerce fraud when compared to 2020, that can put several business, you know, out of line. They won't be able to sustain that weather. So uh, it's a very alarming number. And again, merchants also reported 12% increase in chargebacks last year when compared to 2020. Now, why does this happen? When merchants do not take the time to investigate chargebacks or fraud, they do not have the tools in play in order to protect their business. Frauds just know this. They're going to take you for a ride and they're going to actually keep coming and actually, you know, uh, taking over your business uh, when they know that especially you're not doing anything about it. But again, you are in safe hands. We are going to be talking about what can you do to proactively to protect yourself this holiday season. Let's also look at actually another stat. You know, between Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday, there has been an increase in fraudulent activity of up to 20%. Now, again, this was also reported by TransUnion in the 2021 report. 20% just between actually the Thanksgiving and Cyber Monday is extremely high. Why is this happening? Well, there is tremendous amount of pressure from the merchants to actually keep their cost per acquisition low. One of the ways they do it is actually to reduce the friction they have on the customers when they are actually you know, presenting their products and services. And when you are reducing the friction, the strategies that most of the businesses take in reducing the friction is to stop all the fraud filters. They make it easy for consumers to purchase the product. And frauds just know this. When you do not have fraud filters in place, when you do not have a check and balance in place, fraudsters will come and attack you. Especially when you are selling a product or service, which is a high value commodity, that you can take it to the market, you can sell those products and you can make quick money, they're gonna be targeting you. And this has been a major challenge, even for Fortune 5000 and Fortune 1000 merchants, because they want to reduce the friction, especially during holiday season, to increase their actually you know, conversion rate and to reduce their cost per acquisition. But as a result, it also leads to increase in fraud and chargebacks. Well, I wanted to also talk about the trends that happens during holiday. What is it you need to be aware of? What is going on? What was reported last year? We have seen actually, you know, the gift card usage during the holiday season is extremely high. When the gift cards are being used, it also comes with an enormous amount of fraud and disputes. We have experienced two times more gift card fraud happening, especially during holiday season. Again, it goes back to the fact that merchants do not want to take the time to create the friction or to analyze fraud. As a result, gift cards are a prime target. Especially when you have customers using gift card, it is good to have at least some level of friction in order for you to analyze the transaction and to stop the fraudulent activity from going on. The second one is actually spike in human fraud attacks targeting human uh, e-commerce. Well, Fraudsters are becoming more sophisticated. They are intelligent, they are smart, and they also understand the gaps in the payment ecosystem. So we have seen a huge spike in fraud attacks that are caused by humans. They are actually creating bots that can mimic a human activity. 
they know that actually some of the large retailers, they have fraud tools in place. They also actually have biometric behavioral pattern analysis. So these fraudsters are getting super you know, smart about how to bypass those bots, how to bypass those filters, and they create bots which can mimic a human activity so that they can actually go under the radar. So we have also seen a huge fraud attack mimicking the human patterns. And the last one is, you know, you might be thinking, oh, the retail stores are the primary target, especially the ones where the consumers are purchasing. But we have also seen fraud spiking across all other industries too. We have seen fraud spiking, especially on the insurance side, especially on the car rental side. We have seen actually on the travel side, and also we have seen on the high value commodities like, you know, high end jewelers, high end clothing. We have seen fraud spiking across all the industries, especially during holiday season. Now, we are trying to understand the behavior of the fraudsters. Are they doing this because everybody is actually putting their guards low and they can actually go and attack? It is true, because even with other industries, especially during the holiday season, everybody is running low on staff. They do not have all their staff members in place to monitor the transactions, and fraudsters know that, and that's why they use the holiday season as a prime target to attack merchants. Well, the next actually, uh, you know, I wanted to, the next slide I wanted to talk about, what is the most vulnerable period during the entire year for fraudsters to come and attack any merchants? I would say anywhere between 24 and 25. We have a lot of last minute purchases. We have actually billing address, shipping address, which are being different because fraudsters know that. You have actually the mother sending actually gift item to the kids, which is in another state. So they know that actually merchants are going to be skipping those transactions where the billing address and shipping address are different. There are going to be high value transactions. So fraudsters know this pattern. And that's why we have seen actually very high scope for fraud, especially during the 24th, 25th, and also during actually beginning of January. We have seen a huge spike in fraud. And also, you know, be very careful that you're going to see fewer legitimate customers, especially if you are actually selling a gift card, you are actually in the electronic space, you are actually selling high value goods, you're going to see actually less legitimate customers and you need to create a workflow that can help you do the due diligence before you actually approve those orders and fulfill the orders. The next one is actually merchants, as I talked about, merchants are understaffed you have your employees going on a vacation. So instead of you having 10 people monitoring the transactions, you might have just very few doing it. And as a result, the amount of friction that you create on these transactions to validate is very less, and you're gonna keep approving transactions. So be careful about orders which are coming in on overnight shipments. You want people to have the orders delivered during Christmas time, so you're gonna see a lot of overnight orders. Be extra cautious when you're looking at overnight large volume orders. And the last one is, you know, fraudsters target vulnerable businesses. Well, as you know, still, even in the US and Canada and Europe, there are a large portion of merchants who are vulnerable. They don't have any friction, they don't use 3D secure, they don't use CVV codes or actually AVS matches because they are very, very worried about creating a friction and fraudsters will know this. And they already have a game plan. They have been prepping for an entire year for the holiday season. Just like the way you are prepping for your business growth, they are prepping for actually increasing their revenue by stealing merchandise from you. So they have a game plan. They already know who the vulnerable merchants are. If you have not actually increased any friction in your checkout process, if you have not had any fraud tool, if you do not have a chargeback mitigation plan in place, this is the time for you to plan because you are right close to October right now and you have actually the next couple of months to actually get that executed and that way you're better protected. The next one is actually, you know, we wanted to talk about the distribution of chargebacks. What kind of chargebacks actually you normally see assuming that actually you have a fraud prevention in place. We have seen actually in 2022 uh, close to $30 billion in the U.S. is what it's expected due to chargeback losses, which is a very high number. Last year, it was close to $22, million, $22 billion. This year, we are actually seeing an increase of close to $8 billion more. So we are predicting that merchants are going to be losing close to $30 billion in 2022. And when you look at the distribution of chargebacks, you know, about 5 to 10% of the disputes that we have experienced are due to criminal fraud. We call it as third-party misuse, meaning these are fraudsters using a stolen credit card and the cardholder is never aware of it. The next one, which is the big element, is 
the friendly fraud, also called as first, part, third, first party misuse. So these are cardholders who are purchasing the products from your business and they are actually calling the bank to file a dispute. They do it deliberately or they actually do it because they are not aware of the transactions made by their family members. But whatever might be the case, we call that as a first party misuse and this is gonna be a predominant factor for you and you need to be actually closely watching this as to what percentage of your disputes are happening due to friendly fraud or first party misuse. The third one, which I call it as the low hanging fruits, during the holiday season we talked about you are you know, short staffed. When you're short staffed, you're gonna have challenges when it comes to fulfillment, managing refunds, delivering the products and services accurately. So about 10 to 20% of the disputes are also happening due to merchant error. These are the disputes that were caused primarily due to your internal issues, that if you have a good process in place, if you have a good check and balance, you can reduce this to a greater degree. The next one is let's talk about the most common fraud threats that we have seen during the holiday season. The first one is the refund fraud. As we all know, you know, it could be legitimate or it could also be actually illegitimate. When you are shipping the order, even shipping carriers fail to deliver the products on time. If somebody is placing an order for express shipments and you deliver it you know, in two days, they're gonna be upset. They will accept the product, they will call the bank and say, that I, re I ret returned the product and they never gave the money back. The bank has no way of verifying if what the cardholder is saying is accurate. So as a result, they're gonna actually push the dispute back to you and they say, you have not returned the money, so we are gonna actually send a dispute to you. So refund fraud is the primary reason, you know, primary uh, concern during the holiday season followed by account takeover fraud. Now, we all know that just like the way we want to create less friction on the checkout, we also want to create less friction when you are requesting customers to create an online account, especially gaming companies, especially recurring billing companies. They actually let the customers create a weak password. They don't mandate the customers to create a 16-digit password, which makes it challenging for hackers to hack. So oftentimes, the most common password that is being used by cardholders is 123 or admin123 where the fraudsters can crack that password within a matter of few seconds. Now they know the email, they know the password, and now they are able to get into the vault with the credit card and they can actually purchase gift cards, they can purchase accounts, and they can sell it in eBay. So account takeover fraud is also gonna be a major challenge during the holiday season. The next one is fulfillment fraud. Well, we talked about actually shipping carriers also short staffed, which means products might not be delivered on time. So fraudsters or the first party misuse card holders are gonna take advantage of this. They're gonna say my product never arrived. So they're gonna either file a dispute or ask you to reship the item over and over. So you have to pay a closer watch on the fulfillment fraud. And this could also be a major concern for several retailers. The next one we wanna talk about is repeat offenders. Now, we request all our merchants who we support to maintain a database of all the cardholders who are committing fraud over and over. This could be third party misuse or this could be first party misuse, but we track that very closely. When we know that a cardholder is filing disputes two times in a row, three times in a row, or even more, then we blacklist them. We notify them that, you know what, you're not happy with our products and service, so we have to respectfully decline all future purchases, and we preserve you from going through that abuse over and over. So we call it as repeat offenders fraud, and we help our merchants actually identify the list, and we block them from placing future orders with the merchants. And the last one is actually family fraud. Well, as I talked about, the mom is gonna ship gift items for the son, or the son is gonna do to the mom, vice versa. So you're gonna see a lot of family fraud happening, especially during the holiday season, because we all send gifts to our family members, and the cardholder can easily claim, hey look, my billing address and shipping address is different, somebody took my card. So they can pretend they never placed an order, and oftentimes the merchants are the victim of family fraud. We have actually an intelligent system that can tie the mom and the son or any other family members. So in case when you are coming across through disputes, we can intelligently fight those disputes and we can help you recover the money. So definitely have a closer watch on the friendly fraud. That's gonna also be a primary target on the holiday season. Okay, so how poor customer service lead to chargebacks? Now, we talked about actually illegitimate disputes and why they are happening. I also want to bring your attention to, if you do not deliver, 
your obligation, you do not deliver your products or service, that can also lead to chargebacks. So what we have seen is 62% of the consumers view chargebacks as an alternative way to refund. Now, why do they do that? One, lack of education. They don't know how it can impact a merchant when they call the bank and file a refund. We are not in a position to educate the consumer, but they are gonna call the bank, why? Because you are not making it easy for them to call you. If you do not provide 24-7 customer service, you do not have an easy way to get hold of you, you do not provide an easy way to cancel or return the product, they're gonna call the bank. And when 62% of the consumers say that they are better off calling their bank, which means it could be either lack of awareness or a deliberate attempt, or you are not making it easy for them to cancel the product or actually return the product. So make a closer watch on that because that's a nugget that you can carry today. How easy are you making your cardholders to get hold of you or your consumers to reach out to you? The next one is 40% of the consumers have initiated a chargeback because the merchant had made it difficult to refund. Now, I have worked with several subscription merchants. I've worked with several Fortune 500 merchants, and I asked them a simple question. How can I find your phone number? They walk me through their website. It takes me literally three to five minutes to find their phone number or email. Now, an average consumer, it can take 10 minutes for them to find your phone number. They are all busy during the holiday season. So they're gonna find what is their easier way to get their money or to actually you know, cancel the transaction. They're gonna call the bank because I flip my credit card at the back, I have the 800 number. So it's extremely easy for me to actually call the 800 number and cancel the transaction. So you need to ask yourself how easy it is for your cardholders to find you. Can they go type in online? Normally, if you look at the Google search, the most common search term they use is the merchant name followed by customer service phone number. I have actually experienced it with telecom companies. Oftentimes, telecom companies don't make it easier for consumers to call them or there is no easy way to send an email, so I have to call my bank. So make sure you f make your cardholders fully aware of your policies, your return policies, your phone number, your email, so that they are not actually going through the internet trying to do a phishing expedition to find you or reach out to you. Because if you make it hard, their banks are already making it easy for them to reach out to you. So what's stopping them actually to uh, call them instead of calling you. So think about that, you know, because those two are 62% and 40% are a major issue for any merchant. So let's talk about actually what are the top four recent quotes the chargebacks are being filed, especially during the holiday season. The first one is fraud and not authorized. Now, an average consumer do not understand the difference between the merchant not delivering the product or service or fulfilling their obligation versus fraud. If they are upset about you, then they're gonna call the bank and say it's fraud. And unfortunately, banks do not do a good job in clarifying why disputes are happening in the first place. So you're gonna see predominantly fraud as the major reason code that's happening um, you know, during the holiday season. What Charge by Gurus does is, we do a good job in helping the merchants segregate between the first party misuse and the third party misuse and the merchant error so that you can figure out what you can do internally to prevent them from happening. So definitely look out for the fraud disputes. The second one is good service not received. We talked about it, during holiday season, the major challenge several merchants have is delivering the products on time. Cardholders think I placed an overnight order on the 24th, so my family members or, or me will be getting the product actually the next day. It doesn't happen because you need to give the merchants the time to process the order. So, and oftentimes merchants do not explain that to them. And as a result, they were expecting the order within the next day. And when it doesn't happen, they're going to call their bank being upset, letting them know that I never received my order. So this is the second major dispute reason during holiday season. The third one is not as described or defective. Now, during the holiday season, there are massive amount of packages going everywhere. As a result, the packages or the goods that you're sending can be broken, or it could be misplaced, or it could also be the reason that actually you shipped the wrong item. So make sure you're shipping the right items, make sure you're securing your packages, and if a customer is actually calling you or letting you know that the product is broken, you don't want to question them. You want to either refund or you reship the item because if you create a friction, they're gonna file a dispute. The last recent code is canceled recurring billing. Now, oftentimes, you will see during holiday season, people are trying to scratch for money. They are trying to actually have the extra money to buy gifts for their family members. What do they do? When they see that a merchant has been billing them for six months, 
for any subscription, whether it could be like a gym membership, whether it could be a magazine subscription, or actually any streaming subscription, the easy way for them to add some extra dollars for their credit card is calling the bank and letting them know, I never subscribed for this. I already canceled it. So you're gonna see a major portion of the disputes. If you are a recurring billing merchant, you're gonna see that actually canceled recurring billing is also one of the major reasons for disputes during holiday season. All right, so let's talk about actually, you know, who are at risk, you know? If you are a high-risk merchant, anytime you do subscription billing, you are in the travel space, you are in the adult space, or you are actually selling luxury goods, chances are you are categorized as high-risk merchants, and you're gonna be most vulnerable for disputes. The next one is actually you accept chargebacks as a cost of doing business. You don't investigate, and you keep accepting the liability, and you're telling the fraudsters, you can come rob my store, I'm happy to do nothing. So if you do that, what is stopping him from coming back again? So if you're just writing it off as a cost of doing business, that problem is gonna perpetuate. It's never gonna slow down. The next one is you fail to comply with the card network mandates. Now, card network mandates are also helping the merchants to reduce the problem. You have to do certain things. You need to accept CVV match. You need to accept AVS match. You also actually need to have your terms and conditions explained very clearly if you are a recurring billing merchant. There shouldn't be any surprise to your customers when they are placing an order with you. If you are gonna be enrolling them in a recurring billing, you have to explain the terms very clearly. Don't expect them to go to your terms and conditions and read a five-page document because nobody will have the time to do it. So these are some of the precautions that you need to be taking. And the next one is you don't investigate chargebacks. Now, if you have to create a solution to a problem, you need to first know where the problem is. Oftentimes, even Fortune 500 and Fortune 1000 merchants do not spend the time to investigate why chargebacks are happening in the first place. We always say every chargeback tells a story. That's your tagline. Because if you want to know what's good about your business, look at your chargebacks. You wanted to know what's not good about your business, look at your chargebacks. Because your customers are speaking through their banks. And you have tons of nuggets that you can learn from these disputes. And especially if you are writing it off and you are not investigating it, you are missing on the opportunity because chances are your competition will investigate and they will actually have an upper hand knowing their customers, fixing the problems so that they can can have a higher retention rate. And the last one is you have hidden operational issues. Now, as we talked about, about 10 to 20% of disputes are happening due to merchant error. Merchants are creating the problem. They don't know which department is causing it. They don't know why this is happening. And as a result, they keep continuing doing the same thing that they are doing, and you're missing out the opportunity again. If you do not fix your operational issues, chances are they're gonna take their business elsewhere because every industry you go to, the competition is enormous right now. And also, we live in a world where consumers are really educated. You have very savvy buyers. They want to look through reviews. They wanted to look online. They wanted to see what others are speaking before purchasing a product. So if you fail to actually fix your issues that are causing disputes, chances are your cost per acquisition during holiday season will be extremely high. And let's talk about actually, you know, I mean, I highlight a little bit about what are the side effects of ignoring chargebacks. We talked about we have seen a traditional increase of 10 to 15% in annual chargebacks. You will see that increase. You will also see a spike in repeat offenders because they'll continue doing the same thing over and over and creating more damage. You will also see an increase in overall churn rate because when disputes are causing due to merchant error and customers are upset, they're gonna leave you. So it is very important for you to investigate the chargebacks. The next one is rise of losing merchant accounts. Now with the card networks, they have reduced the threshold. Previously, you they can tolerate up to 1%. The transaction to chargeback ratio can be 1%, but now it is reduced to 0.9%, which means you have to be even more careful right now, and if you are not, you will end up losing your merchant account. And the last one is increase in customer acquisition cost. Well, as I talked about, we have savvy buyers, and we need to make sure that we fix our operational issues. We have to deliver what we promise. We also have to make sure we give premium products and add more value to the consumers. If not, they will go out and file a dispute. Or if not, you're gonna be actually increasing, you see an increase in customer acquisition cost. So let's talk about actually the chargeback management overview. How do we solve this problem, right? I mean, it's not a one size, it's not a one solution fits all. We always believe in a customized approach, depending on the industry, 
depending on the problem they are facing. How big is their first party misuse problem? How big is their third party misuse problem? How big is their merchant error problem? So depending on what your problems are, we take a triangular approach in solving the true fraud, the friendly fraud, and the merchant error, because that's gonna be the core focus. If you want to really reduce your chargebacks organically, if you want to reduce your repeat offenders, if you also want to actually you know, lower your revenue loss that you're facing, you need to take a triangular approach, and we call it as FPR 360. FPR stands for Fight, Prevent, and Recover. So we'll talk about that in detail as to what this entails. So first one is true fraud. So how do you actually control true fraud? As we talked about, true fraud is also third-party misuse. These are the fraudsters knowing your gaps and vulnerabilities, and they use stolen credit cards to place an order. So how do you do that? So the, we take a four-step approach here. One, you need to have a fraud prevention tool if you have a high percentage of true fraud. The fraud prevention tools does a great job in blocking actually the stolen credit card to a certain degree, but also it comes with a challenge where you might also block good customers. So you need to actually make sure you're working with the right vendor and ensure that you are not blocking the good guys, but you're blocking the bad guys. The next one is 3D secure and tokenization. That's also one great way for you to lower your true fraud or a, first, a third party misuse. And also we talked about AVS and CVV filters. The AVS CVV filter is the low hanging fruit I call it as. If at all you can do one thing uh, to reduce actually the third party misuse, make sure that you have your AVS and CVV filter checked. Now it doesn't give you great protection but it, it is a good starting point. The last one is train staff. Especially during holiday season, you need to train your staff prior to the holiday season, not during the holiday season. Let them know how can you quickly verify transactions. How do you verify high ticket items? How do you verify low ticket items? How do you verify actually transactions where the shipping address and billing address are, are different, and if the origination address is different? So you need to train your staff for different scenarios and create a quick checklist so that they can actually verify the transactions which are in the gray area quick, and they don't spend a lot of time you know, going deeper into one single transaction. So those are the quick action steps I highly recommend if you want to control your true fraud during holiday season. And let's actually talk about our first party misuse, also friendly fraud. So what can you do? One way actually for you to do is use a root cause analysis. Why this is important? If you know who your good actors are, bad actors are, you can block your bad actors. And also, you know, you will have a greater understanding of your customers through the root cause analysis. We provide this tool to all our merchants who are looking to understand their problem. The tool does a fantastic job in helping you understand, you know, who are your good actors, who are your bad actors, who are all the banks you don't want to accept credit cards from, how many chargebacks are happening due to gift cards, how many chargebacks are happening due to AVS CVV mismatch. So you get tons and tons of analytics through this so that you can understand your pain point and the patterns. And also, some way actually for you to control uh, first party misuse is by fighting chargebacks. Because when you are fighting the chargebacks, you are also telling the bank that you have delivered your obligation, you have fulfilled your service, because it is extremely crucial. Oftentimes I've been asked questions uh, from merchants, hey, if I fight the chargebacks, will I not be upsetting the customer? We only recommend you to fight illegitimate chargebacks. Don't fight the legitimate chargebacks. If you think you made a mistake, own up to it and don't fight it. So we have an intelligent algorithm that can help you differentiate between illegitimate chargebacks and legitimate chargebacks, and we will only represent you on the illegitimate chargebacks. We put together the package, we send it to the bank, let them know that you have fulfilled your obligation, and we help you recover the money. Now, oftentimes I'm also asked a question, if I'm just attaching the package and I'm sending it and I'm fighting the dispute, can't I do it myself? No, representment is an art and a science. We actually customize our packages on 40 different data points. We look at who the banks are, we look at who your customers are, we look at the transaction type, we look at your business, we look at actually what happened with that particular transaction. So we customize our dispute packages. If you are thinking of actually sending a bunch of evidence and hoping that you're gonna recover the money, your recovery rate will be less than 20%. But we take it, representment as an art and a science, and that's why we call it a smart chargeback representment. So we do a deep dive, we understand the problem, we understand who is escalating this problem, and we customize our packages so that we can actually get you the best win rates possible. 
Our next one is actually one way for reducing the first party misuse is having an efficient process on a team. We train our clients so that they know exactly how to block customers who are repeat offenders. We help them identify those customers. We also actually identify the gaps in their checkout process, and we help them revise the policies so that they can actually present better information to their cardholders and eliminate the confusion. So again, on a quick summary, smart chargeback representment, explaining the terms of sale on the car, taking cardholder consent, uh, having an efficient process and a smart team to manage friendly fraud, and most important, the root cause analyzer. You know, those are all the key steps that I highly recommend in order for you to control your first party misuse disputes during the holiday season. Let's talk about the merchant error. Again, merchant error are caused because of your internal issues. And if you don't know where the problems are, oftentimes you will have a tough time solving the issue. So one of the analytics that we provide our merchants is we tell you exactly which business unit within your organization was responsible for this dispute. We also tell you why the dispute is happening. If the dispute is happening because the product was not delivered, the dispute is happening because the refund was never issued, the cancellations never happened, or nobody answered the phone, we get a lot of intel from the banks and we can present that to you so that you can make an informed decision. We have had merchants who manufacture products in the U in outside of US, and as soon as they shifted the manufacturing process, we saw a huge spike in return fraud. And when we spoke to the merchant asking, why did this happen? They clearly said, well, we went to China for manufacturing our product, but clearly the quality of product was a major concern, and as a result, consumers were disappointed and they were filing a dispute. So any single change that you make in your business can impact you positively or negatively. But when it impacts you negatively, it is important for you to know why that impact is, how big of an impact is, and that's where we come and empower you with analytics so that you know exactly how your changes are impacting your disputes, how the changes are impacting your cardholders so that you can run a safe business. So, you know, provide excellent customer service because we all live in the Amazon world. If I want to talk to somebody, I want to return my product, Amazon makes it easy. Consumers are set in that way. You cannot change their mind. They expect the same from you. They want you to answer their call in less than 30 seconds. They want you to give them the return label if they're returning. They want you to send them another item immediately. We live in this world. So if you do not live up to that expectation, chances are it's gonna to lead to disputes. So think about that You know, when you're thinking, how long are I should be opening my customer service? How should I set my return policy? If you make it harder, the banks are making it easy for them to get their money back. So you don't want to be penalized for that. And also, um, examining the chargeback data, we talked about the root cause. Shipping products on time, of course it can be challenged, but if you work with the right fulfillment company who understands this problem, then you can minimize the impact of you know, fulfillment fraud. So those are the action steps I would definitely recommend when it comes to merchant error disputes. And quickly, a summary of the value that we provide our merchants, as we talked about. We provide you a dashboard where we can pull all the data from different processors, from your gateway, from your different business units, if you're running multiple businesses, where we can provide you what the challenges are. We can tell you what action steps you can take, how much money we have recovered for you. It's a nice dashboard that it can get you so that you never have to worry about chargebacks. We provide you an army of gurus who can help you solve the problem together rather than you trying to solve it together. And we call it as mind and machine intelligence. So we use those two approaches to solve the problem for you. Next one is actually real-time tracking. When a dispute happens, you wanted to know immediately why this is, so that you can prevent future disputes from happening. So our dashboards track all your disputes, and you will be notified immediately when a dispute hits our account, so that you know the pulse of your customers. And the last but not least, we also provide the dashboard so that it's infinitely scalable. Today, you are actually doing 10,000 transactions. Tomorrow, you're doing million transactions, doesn't matter. We are still capable of supporting your business. Today, you have one business unit. Tomorrow, you think of acquiring five more businesses. We are still capable of pulling all the data across all the businesses in one place. One of the most interesting aspects that our merchants love, especially the Fortune 500 and thousands are the scalability factor. How quickly we can actually help them you know, get started. We have less than three weeks time in order for you to use our services. And we also take a low code, no code approach, meaning we are not gonna ask you for integration if you don't have the resources. So we can get you started soon, and we provide you everything in one place, and we provide you an army of gurus who can solve the problem. 
And that's what our promise is to all our merchants. And again, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed presenting the data. I hope you enjoyed too. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, email us at win at chargebackgurus.com. You can also come to our website and you can actually go to our uh, resources section where if you need a copy of this presentation, you can download as well. So I hope actually you all have a wonderful holiday season and I hope you're able to manage fraud and disputes effectively. And if there is anything Charged by Gurus can do to help you be a part of your success, we are always there to help. So feel free to email us at win at chargebackgurus.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.